Huge uh, moves by the team over the last week or so. Uh, your assessment of everything that's happened over the last uh, couple of weeks? Very pleased. Alex has worked very, very hard. Uh, scouting staff's worked hard, um, and not just over the last couple of weeks. I think it's been over the last three years, um, from the time he took the job and actually started increasing the scouts and screening the, increasing the development budget. Um, it gave us the opportunity to make the deal that uh, came together. Uh, you heard how it came together. It started with one player, and it just got expanded. So, a uh, very exciting time. What is your ex uh, expectation of this team in 2013? Well, I think we fast forwarded it. I mean, you know, we're looking to have this team, uh, I don't think, to be anything other than a contender. Um, I don't want to put it into the context of what number of wins you're going to have, but um, it's, built to, it's built to win. And uh, I think that was the way that uh, uh, it came together when uh, we made the trade and then uh, signing Melky. Um, and it started actually before that, you know, getting Rogers, I mean, an arm that they like, uh, you know, because it's just another arm in the bullpen. And the whole thing has come to come together, and it's, uh, I think, something that we have to be very optimistic about, very positive about, but, you know, you got to play the games. I mean, it's a... Uh, you can, uh, you can talk all you want, but once we get to spring training and uh, start on the field, we'll find out how good this team is. Well, if we're going to compare this to a poker hand, we'd say you're all in on a single hand. Do you, do you feel this season coming up is, is that? No, I don't feel it's all in. I think, you know, it's all part of an evolution of how a team goes. I mean, the goal always was, was to be good on a sustainable basis. And I think, that, you know, we've got a shot to be good on a sustainable basis. Um, we still have a lot of guys in the minor leagues. Uh, we have players at AAA level. We have players in low A that uh, are still coveted by other organizations so that you know, we have a pipeline there uh, where they come up or where they get dealt, uh, get dealt to, to increase the team. I think, I think it's fantastic that the way that he's put it together because that wasn't the case three years ago when we, uh, when we first got into this. Paul, oh, with regards to the increase in payroll, how much of a factor did the increase in attendance this past year and the fact that there's additional money coming in TV revenue, how much did the factor that play or was this a capacity you guys kind of always had to go to that? No, I think we always felt that, you know, like, I've been fortunate. I've worked for two great owners. Um, I worked for Labatt's, which was a great owner, and I've worked for Rogers, which is a great owner. I've always felt when the opportunity was right that Rogers would actually invest in the ball club. Um, not just money. I mean, it was a matter of investing it right. Um, we didn't want to spend stupid. You know, we didn't want to be dumb about it. And so um, we've had opportunities in the past uh, where we've gone to them and said this we want to do that would have gone over our budget. Uh, but you know what happened? It didn't happen because the deal didn't go through. And so nobody knows about it. But Rogers has been committed. And um, the fact of the matter is that you know, we're getting the benefit of the dollars that they gave us when we actually started putting money into the minor leagues. Echeverry was a big sign. You know, we could have got Chapman. I mean, people forget about the money that we uh, were given to, to, to carry out the philosophy that Alex had, which was to build the minor leagues. So I think when I look at it you know, as, to, as directionally where we're going to go, I think we're in pretty good shape. If you see something you like in free agency, is there still room to add to this payroll? That's a different question. I mean, we'd have to ask to have a look. I mean, you know, I think the philosophy still stands. We'd have to make a, um, we'd have to look at it. I mean, I don't think that that's the intention to expand it too much more. We've gone up the way that we are. But if it was going to make the team a better team, the answer to that is yes. Um, you know, but I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to get into the, to the free agent market to the degree that some of these contracts are out there right now. Um, you know, it's length of contracts, you know, and that's always been an impediment for us uh, because one of the things that we haven't done is wanted to go over five years. I mean, that's been a policy, and, you know, some of these contracts are long. Uh, you can't have it both ways, and, you know, luckily through the trades, we're able to, to put ourselves in a position where, you know, we've kept our philosophy because we have nobody that's gone over five years, and I think that we can put ourselves in a position where, you know, we can actually um, draw people, and it all works out well. So, spent the money, now let's go out and win the games. So, Paul, you don't, you don't have a defined ceiling on payroll, but you, you have an idea where you want to be. Yeah, we never had a defined ceiling on payroll, yeah. but you know what? Fans didn't care about the defined ceiling. They cared about, you know, what the performance was on the field and so you know we had to always live with that because I always talked about written about you know speculated about we never had one I mean all what we really had was a was an idea as to directionally where we were going to go mm -hmm. so that you know we could build this team to to the to the, to the level that we want to do which is to win a championship I mean that's been the goal we do not have a defined level on it you know um, I suppose if you want to say are we going to go past the luxury tax of 175 million dollars the answer is no we're not going over that number. Paul, when you went into ownership of this deal, what did you say and what was the reply? Um, you know, I, I guess, John, the answer to that would be that, you know, we've taken other deals before. Um, you know, we were going to improve the ball club. We were going to improve the number of positions we were going to be. Here was the cost to it. Uh, we were highly recommending it. Uh, we thought that the club was going to, uh, at this point in time, be in a position where we had to, you know, show the fans, show the country. Um, the fans came out last year, um, and deals like this don't come along very often. I mean, this was a confluence of events. Um, Miami was moving, uh, and we had the we had the pieces, and Miami got some very good pieces back. 
I mean, let's be honest, but we didn't just give them just give them a couple a couple of uh, of bo broken down ball players or, or near prospects. They got some real prospects. Um, so I think from their point of view, I mean, they've been ready for it because we've taken other things to them before, where they had actually signed off on, but we did not do the deal. So I mean, this wasn't one of those ones where it was a surprise, and, you know. And you bring them along. You just don't drop it on them and say, you know, this is what's going to happen. You bring people along and say, we've got a chance, okay. And then the next day, the chance is looking better. And then the next day, wow, you know, we can do it. And you know, Rogers sign off, but uh, not a surprise to me because Easy Rogers sell. have been terrific. Easy sell. Yeah. Not a hard sale, not a hard sale because, you know, I think there was a rationale for it when you're getting a guy like Reyes or getting two starting pitchers and then you come along with Milky Cabrera. We knew kind of where we were going there and there seemed to be a couple of issues that had been identified or a couple of positions identified and it seemed to me that within a matter of uh, four days they were kind of filled.